So we're going to be going and adding parks into this model. So I saved it as version 4, and now I'd like you to do the following. I'd like you to go add a park into the model. Now, Dylan, mm -hmm. I was hoping to consult with you on a certain matter. Yes, sir. Um, so, um, uh, sp specifically, um, can you comment on, um, so this morning we added point objects, GIS point objects to the model, to wit, stores and, and uh, stores of groceries, or convenience stores and, um, and added in also uh, convenience stores. If we wanted to add in regions, like a park as a region, uh, can that be done in the same way? If you search for parks, you should be able to. Like exactly. If you search for parks, you should get all of those GIS yep. regions. You just say, because the option says convert to GIS point slash region. Exactly. Um, as far as I know, that's a pretty standard thing to do. Okay, and, and could we have their visual representation depend on their their you know actual region? Oh, like the, the, it'll squiggly? Yeah. Yeah, it, it should be that automatically. Okay, so can you help? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Okay, so Dylan, normally uh, when I've done this before, I've, I've drawn a little square, green square for this park. But what has to happen for it to automatically add that visual representation? Uh, so you mean like on the map? Or yeah, like are you, exactly. You're trying to add parks like convenience stores then? Yes, yes but each should have a sort of visual appearance, like, you know, a yeah, shape. When, when you add the regions, yeah. Okay, okay. okay, good. So I don't need to add any special sort of icon to them. So, yeah. um, one thing I suppose we could do is, is there coffee and water at the back there? Okay. Uh, I could probably go ask them for more coffee and whatnot. We can take a break, futz with this for a minute or two, and then... <coughs> oh, I, I think we can... <coughs> I, I don't let's see, try it. I don't okay. see any problems happening. Okay, good. So um, let's give it a try. Yeah. So we just added a park. So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to Maine. This is kind of what I'm guessing, Dylan, but, but we'll see. Okay, so I go back to Maine. And do you remember how to search in this? Anyone remember? Uh, is there any reason you need a park agent specifically? Well, yes, because I want to find the distance to the nearest park agent. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so anyone remember how we find something? What do we do? Click. Double click, indeed. We could go up to this, and this time we're going to search, Dylan, we're going to search for region, right? We're going to search for park. Okay, park here. And we're going to press the search button. Ready? Go. Okay, so a search will take place here and we find uh, various parks. Um, there's uh, Albert Park, uh, Faulkner Park, Flagstaff Gardens. I ran around Flagstaff Gardens um, uh, several times, I believe. Um, Queen Victoria Gardens, Treasury Gardens. I must say your city is, is recommended by beautiful infrastructure for, for physical activity, um, of which I am very happily partaking. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to select here Flagstaff Gardens, um, uh, perhaps uh, Queen Victoria Gardens, and Treasury Gardens, and um, I would like to I would like to add them to the model. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so uh, I would like to go here, right click on it, and... I think first you convert to GIS points regions. Okay. And then you create agents at the select elements. Okay. So we'll try this. Okay. Convert to GIS re points regions. Boom. Okay. And then, and then, Dylan, from that, do create oh, this? Yeah, parks. So I think what that should do is it should automatically say this agent um, will be in that node. Uh, alternatively, you know, we can make those GIS points into a collection. There are a few ways to do this, and it's been a few months since I have. Yes. That's why okay. I want to take a minute just to fuss, but um, okay. if we want to try a lot, we can try a lot. Yeah, yeah, okay. So here they are. There are the parks, it looks like, right there. You can see them. Uh, we can zoom in here, and and uh, there's there's a set of the parks. It looks like they're, they're right here. 
depict it. Does those do those look plausible there? Um, looks like to me that these are delineated as spaces somehow. Um, okay. Um, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, now let's let's go to uh, park. And I think what we'll do just for for ease is we'll give it some representation visually. So so we're going to go double click on park. And for this park, I'd like to give it a a simple um, um, a, a simple small rectangle as a representation. Okay, so it'll be a small rectangle for the park, and as is appropriate for a park, we will color it. Whoops, we will color it green. Okay, um, here we go, and. And we'll make this green. It'll just be visually obvious where this park is. Green. There we go. Okay. So we have a park here. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to go. So who needs a bit more time for that? Okay. So what did I do? I went to park. I went down to presentation. I dragged in a rectangle. I frobbed it so it was small with a height and width of 10, or you can actually just type width and height 10. And then I set its fill color to be lime. Okay, just seeing how these uploads are going. Okay. Um, good, good. Okay, so it's lime, lime color, okay. Great. Okay. So who needs a little bit more time? Okay. Are we okay with that? So, so I went to park. I dragged in from rectangle and I frogged it so it was small. Um, I set the width and height to be 10 and then I set the fill color to be lime. Okay, are we okay? Some people just have a different list of parks than yours. Oh, okay, yeah, they can choose three at their leisure. Okay. The reason I'm avoiding doing all is because some people have the PLE version, which may, which may be unhappy about trying to add too many things in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to go back to Maine and click outside of that, and you'll notice the parks. I carelessly combine them in, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate them out here, um, the three parks that we added. Okay, and now having separated those out. I'm going to do, do you remember what we did earlier to create a collection? We selected them, remember this? And we right click to create a collection. So we right clicked on this, create a collection. And we're going to do the same thing and it's going to be called Parks Collection. Okay. Okay, now we're sticking close to the number of active objects it allows. Very close. We may have to remove one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So now we have a parks collection. Okay, that's good. Each of these parks here is associated with a, um, with a collection, okay? That's great. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to, I would invite you to uh, build this model and I would invite you to run it because it, it's possible with some of the PLEs it, it may be right at the limit and maybe it's, it, maybe the limit is 20, like in other words, maybe with 25 you can't do it, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so uh, I'm building it, making sure it's a, it's a happy camper and then I'm going to run the model, okay? You notice with a GIS, it, it seems to take a longer time building. Uh, Dylan is, is, is familiar with this. 
I believe if you leave EnergyLogic and come back in, it may exhibit salutary benefits. Okay, I'm gonna go run it. Here we go. Run this model. It's gonna be starting it. And we're not yet using the park information, but we have added them. Okay. No, that's a good question. I'm, I'm wondering, we did add a little visual representation, but we did so after creating them. And so there is some chance that that they won't be visible here. And I, I want to see, okay. So it looks like there are some additional items here. I don't know if those are those parks. Let's go down and, and, and see here. Um, so I think one was called Flagstaff. And I'm just going to select Flagstaff. Okay, yeah, that doesn't tell me that much of, of use. Okay, um, probably should have given them that visual representation before we did it. Okay, um, uh, but I, these things may be associated with the parks. I'm not, I'm not positive. These three here. It's actually really strange that it's not showing their presentation. I know, I wonder if it's because we added the presentation after we created them, Dylan? Yeah, that seemed, it seems like such a strange thing that they would. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, um, so uh, what I'm going to do here now is to add in, so they are there. Whether they're displayed or not, we're gonna have to futz with. Um, because uh, I'm, I'm not clear one way or the other about that. But finally, I'd like to add the representation of, of um, uh, parks on physical activity, okay? And physical activity energy expenditure. So I'd like you to go to a person here. If you go to a person, are you in person now? Okay, I'd like you to add a variable and the variable will be called distance from home to nearest park, okay? The variable will be called dist, maybe we'll call it dist from home to nearest park, okay? Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to go to this entry action to the food seeking state chart. Okay? This entry action, when they first come into being, I'm going to assign that distance. Okay? So who wants a little bit more time to add that variable? A little bit more? The, the name? The name is dist from dist from home to nearest park. Okay? Dist from home to nearest park. And for the entry action to this state chart, we're going to assign to that. Okay? So the entry action to the state chart will be dist from home to nearest park equals, and I'll put this up in the big screen in just a second, equals to distance to get nearest agent main dot parks collection. This is this is what this is. This is the action when coming into the state chart. Oh. Okay, this is, I'll, I'll put this on two different lines so you can see it clearly. This is what it is, just like that. The distance from the home to the nearest park is equal to the distance to the nearest agent, which is found from the park's collection. I've got my distance from me to the nearest park. Okay, 
Are we ready? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about, we're, we're most of the way through this. Um, we have just a few other components to do. Okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to add two constant variables. Okay? Um, we could add these as parameters. This is where the line blurs. Um, we could make them assumptions, but because they're going to vary so little, um, I'd I, I like to just show them as constant parameters. You could choose what you use. So this is going to be a uh, park distance beta intercept. It's going to be a beta beta zero. It's going to be an intercept. And after I've added that, I'm going to make it a constant. This is from the advanced area. It's the constant variable. It's not going to be something which varies by person, and I just want to sort of use it to specify this. Could it be a parameter? Yes, and I'll readily admit that maybe, maybe that's even a better option. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, so I added a constant variable. I did want you to see that you could do this. And secondly, I'm going to add a park distance energy expenditure beta. In other words, it's going to be a beta term based on how, OK, actually, I'm sorry, I screwed up. The first one should not be called park distance beta intercept. It should be called energy expenditure uh, beta intercept. I, I, I apologize, but that's how it's being used, and um, and it, it, it doesn't, um, it, it really should be clear. It should be called energy expenditure beta intercept. It's sort of the um, energy expenditure beta intercept, OK? Um, yeah, okay, okay. I'm imagining a sort of um, regression equation associated with that. Okay, now, for these two constant parameters, the first one is gonna have a value given by the log of 0 0.0075, and the second one will have a value of, of, minus, of minus 0 0.001. Let me go back to that again. The first one, how did I turn into a constant? I went down to this advanced area and used constant. And its value is going to be log of 0 0.0075. I'll put that up in the big screen. Like that. And the second of the parameters is going to be minus 0 0.001. The second parameter, in short, will be minus 0 0.001. That's going to be the the uh, park distance energy expenditure beta. Okay. 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 We we basically just have one more piece to put into place, and we're off to the races. Okay. Um. Um. Uh, off to the races with this. Okay. Are we ready for this? To this final push. Okay. You ready to win one for the Gipper? Okay, uh, so so ladies and gentlemen, let's go here, and for this weight in kilograms, let's let's add another uh, flow here. Okay, let's add a flow, and I want it to go flow down, um, and it, it's a little bit picky about how things are, so I'm gonna I dragged it down here, and then I dragged it like this. Okay, come on, get down there. There. Okay, now. This flow, ladies and gentlemen, will be called will be called um, uh, will be called the energy yeah um, energy expenditure from physical activity. Okay, um, uh, energy expenditure via physical activity. Energy energy expenditure via physical activity. There we go. Great. 
Great. Okay, now, this flow will depend on several things. One, it'll, and these things that on which it will depend will be those things we've just recently been adding. To which, the variable disk from home to nearest park, and then these two constants that we just added. So I'd like you to add these in here. Okay, here we go, here we go, and there we go. We can go add this in here to that, and finally, we can go add this in to, to this. Okay? Okay. For this here, ladies and gentlemen, energy expenditure via physical activity, we are going to put a formula. And this is the sort of formula that I wanted you to see. Oh, sorry, one other, one other thing here. A link down from weight in kilograms to reflect the fact that our heavier weight for a given level of physical activity, in terms of sort of running around the track, we expend more energy, okay? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, this formula is going to be given by the following, and I will put this up on the big screen. It's gonna be the exponent of a quantity. This is the sort of formula that will come out of a hazard rate calculation, for example, um, it's going to depend on um, here the, the energy expenditure beta intercept plus the, come on, plus the park distance energy expenditure beta times the distance from home to nearest park and then end the exponent, okay, come on, um, x of this plus this from home to nearest, okay, come on, why aren't you, distance, okay, dist from home to nearest park, end this, and then times weight in kilograms. Okay, that's it. Okay, let me put that up on the big screen and you can see it. So I have this, basically. Maybe, maybe it's better for clarity if I put this first. There we go. Um, so it's the weight in kilograms times the e to the something, and it's e to the some intercept plus um, some park distance beta times uh, distance from home to nearest park. Now this could be criticized, um, uh, but the point is that often um, the rates of things are derived through statistical measures and uh, for some statistical measures, particularly for hazard rates, you use survival analysis or cost proportional hazards analysis or, uh, uh, or a competing risks analysis, which give you uh, a rate that's formulated as the exponent of some um, beta zero plus some beta one times x one plus some beta two times x two. And I'm just showing a, a sort of form of that here. So here we have um, weight in kilograms times the x with this plus this, and the x, the, the, the parentheses for this go all the way around this whole thing, okay? So that's, that's all, and that's all we've, that remains to be done. So that's for the flow out. That's for this new flow out um, associated with this. Are we okay with that? So the weight in kilograms is their current weight. There's some intercept plus some park distance times this. And uh, you know I'm I'm of torn whether I should cut this out because really it's duplicating some function out of the basal energy expenditure, but we could always make it zero anyway. I'm 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 not going to change it now. Okay. Are we okay with this? Okay. Who would like more time to put this in? That's associated with the flow, okay? So in contrast to food, physical expenditure, physical energy expenditure, physical activity energy expenditure here is treated in a very coarse-grained way. We're just saying your distance to the nearest park 
is influencing the amount of physical energy expenditure. We could characterize actual visits to the park. We could characterize you know, their visits over time um, to a park and characterize how that affects things. But let's run the model and we should, we should be able to see, um, see behavior. Okay, okay, I, I see a warning. I thought, I thought I saw an indication of a warning. Give me a second here. Um, I'm gonna go to the problems view. No, no, I said no, no problems, okay. Good, okay. Okay, now I'm gonna go down to person here, to a population, and as normal, it, it takes some time to warm up. Who needs Dylan help? Who needs any help? Dylan help is being summoned. Okay, who needs, who needs additional help? Okay, help is on its way. Okay, who needs additional help? Okay, Let, ladies and gentlemen, um, Oh wow, that's okay. Okay, that's that's. Oh wait, we forgot to in we forgot uh, 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 mumble. Um, what? Okay, I'm I'm confused because the disc to the nearest park was huge. I'm not sure why that's huge. I'm not sure what's going on. Disc to the nearest park. Distance to the nearest park is based on the distance to of the get nearest agent. So. Yes, Dylan. I don't think you ever actually placed the parks. I think we created them, but I'm not sure we actually put them in a particular location. I thought we said create See, create agent it's, from. Yeah, but it's doing weird, kind of funny things. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. So what we, what we should actually do is we should try to figure out when the model is running where the parks actually ended up. Yeah. And see what's going on. OK. Um, so uh, that's, that's fine, but another way we could do it, which will definitely work because I've done it before, is to add them as points. And then, okay, um, so, so ladies and gentlemen, I apologize, but it looks like uh, adding them as regions um, uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, pan out in terms of their availability. It looks like they're, they're not, it doesn't fully understand. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go one more time to this. Okay, um, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to go here. I'm not sure why why this is uh, exhibiting this function. Um, so I'd like to go and uh, would like to go revisit this issue associated with um, uh, with with this um, uh, with the parks. Okay, um, so. Um, my, my screen is currently uh, uh, displeasurable. Um, so give me, a, give me a second as I try to figure out what, uh, what, is, uh, what is happening here. Um, okay, uh, this is, looks exciting. Um, okay, so what's running here? Okay, any logic is taking a disproportionate amount of time. Um, and, uh, by appearance, is it somewhat alive? But um, okay, okay. Um, but it's it's really requiring an ordinary, an ordinary amount of memory. Okay, that's. Okay, I'm gonna kill my any logic. Just get it back. Here we go. Boom. Dead. Okay. Um, calling back any logic. And I'll pause this video for a moment. I'd ask, I'd ask the apologies of those in the room and those over the internet to um, to go and go through uh, some steps because we we apparently in adding these parks as regions we we had some problems. So what I'm going to ask you to do, and I apologize, this will take no longer than five minutes and quite possibly less than that. I would like you to go to Maine and I would like you to delete the three parks that you added. Not the park class, not, not this guy we added here, but those three particular parks that we added. I would like you to delete them. You can delete them by selecting them and pressing this button here. Boom. Gone.
Okay? And next, I'd like you to delete the parks collection. Boom. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, what did I just do? I went to main, I selected those parts and I deleted them. You can use this button here to delete. And then I went to the parks collection and I deleted that. Okay, we're, we're a lot of the way done. We just have to do one search, recreate, and then make the collection again. Are we ready? Are you ready for the next step? Okay, I apologize for this. Uh, are we ready? Okay, so I'd like you to double click on the map, search for parks, or park, 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 Let's search for park, and here are the set of all parks. Notice I just pressed enter, you could press this button. Okay, here we are, we have the same parks again. I'm going to select what will be the same park, three parks for me. So you search by point this time? I search by point, thank you so much, Owen. I should search by point. Okay? Search by point. Okay, I search by point, and now having done that, I'm going to right click on these, and I'm going to do create agents at selected elements, and I will create a park. Okay, any question? And I'm gonna do park. How did I do that? I double clicked on the map, made sure point was selected. I, I, uh, How come my I parks entered are park here. Over there in Melbourne. And then I did create agents at selected elements, park, okay? Park, park, okay? So, oh, okay. Okay, there's, there's, uh, there's, here's one park, two parks, three parts. Here we go. Three parts, do you see those? on the map? Okay, good. So ladies and gentlemen, we're most of the way done. All we have to do is one more thing, and we should be in good shape, okay? Are you ready? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right now, before we had a thing called parks collection. Okay, um, and we're going to go and we're going to instead change it to be, uh, instead uh, create that again, okay? So uh, we depend on this, you may remember, in the parks collection here. So so we're gonna go select those three, three parks, perhaps separate them out from the others, okay? And now I'd like you to right click on them and do create collection. And I'd like you to call the collection parks collection, parks collection. Now to be consistent with the others, and probably before I should have called it park collection, because the others are grocery store collection, supermarket collection, but I'm calling it parks collection. Are we okay? Okay, now having done that, so what did I do? Let me rehearse again for anyone who's, who's a little bit behind. I double clicked on the map, it was set at point, I searched for park, I selected three parks, I right clicked on them, I said create agents at appropriate points, I selected to create a park, these three were created, I then selected these three, and I did right click and I did create collection and I called it park collection. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to compile this model now, okay? So please, Compile the model, and you should be in good shape. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have now a collection of parks. It built successfully. Let's run the model. Let's run the model. Okay. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're running it. I'm, I'm running it here. And as normal, it takes a little bit of time, but there are my three parts. They lay before us. And it's, it's running here. We see now, if we go down to the level of an individual, we could see that a person has uh, associated with them not only a basal energy expenditure, but an energy expenditure that depends on their proximity to parks, okay? Um, so there's some basal energy expenditure plus some uh, expenditure here. And the distance from the nearest park will, will partly determine uh, their energy expenditure here, their part, their physical re activity related energy expenditure. Okay, so so here we have the model running along. Here's a person who's 1.5, so 1,565 uh, units from the nearest park. Again, we can set what those units are in the model um, to use. Here's someone with a lower distance. This person here who has a low distance, has an energy expenditure from physical activity 0.118. The person with a comparatively higher distance has a fraction of that, about five times less. This person um, has yet, low, yet lower because they're further away from the park, okay? Here's a comparatively close person to the park in a larger energy expenditure. So ladies and gentlemen, we have here these individuals, and they are they are uh, seeking um, seeking food, and they are being influenced in terms of physical activity by the parks. The one thing that remains less are things related to output, and I'd like to to just to complete things. I'd like to give people an appearance that reflects their weight. Can we do that, ladies and gentlemen? Where would we go if we if we wish to add girth? To a person, where would we go? We go to person, and where, where, and in person? To the oval, to the oval indeed. To the oval, okay. Um, so uh, within this context, um, I'm going to go down to the oval, um, and pardon me here, um, and. We are going to, within the oval, um, right. Uh, so, so within this oval, we're going to go to the second oval, the the body oval, not the oval for the head, because that will remain invariant with weight, but rather the 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 oval for the body. And for their x radius, we're going to have their x radius, ladies and gentlemen, depend on their weight. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to type a formula. Can I type it directly into here? What do I have to do? I have to change it like this so it's a it's a formula, not just a number. Okay, so I'd like this to be, instead of three, I'd like it to be three times weight in kilograms divided by 75.0. So if they're exactly 75, the, the, the width will be weight, and probably we should make a 3.0 just to be consistent with things for hygiene. 3.0 times weight in kilograms divided by 75. So if they're exactly 75 kilograms, weight in kilograms divided by 75 will be one, and they'll be of width three. By contrast, if they're twice that weight, they will be of much higher, uh, higher weight and much higher uh, girth, okay? Um, now, this will tend to lead to smaller vi visible variations. If you wish to make this larger, um, we, could, uh, we could do so, but uh, I'm going to leave it like that for simplicity. Okay? So now I'd like you to run it. Run the model, and you should see them uh, experiencing, uh, experiencing flexion um, concerning their weights. As they um, as they evolve over time, so some individuals are more weighty than others. This this individual here has a girth, for example, which exceeds this individual down down here, um, and those girths are actually evolving over time. 
um, the, 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 the weights associated with people are, are shifting as they gain or lose weight. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have a model here which is uh, stylized in its depiction as a model some of us inevitably are but built into class, but it has a number of key features with it. Um, a, a first key feature is it endogenizes a person's, a person's uh, evolution of their weight by virtue of capturing their, uh, the impact of their food, the impact of the food environment on their food procurement and food consumption and by extension food consumption activities. Those food consumption and procurement activities end up influencing in turn their, the evolution of their weight status. Um, but more than that, the proximity to parks here is also influencing the person's physical activity and consumption of, of, uh, of uh, calories due to physical activity. Their proximity to parks um, means that the ones who are closer will tend to burn more energy than ones who are further, further away from parks. Um, uh, at the same time, we have preferences captured preferences associated with uh, going to convenience stores versus going to grocery stores. Those preferences are affected by the proximity of stores. The closer you are to a store, the more likely you are to, to go to that one. Um, the closer you are to a grocery store versus a convenience store, the more likely you are to evolve to that one. But we also uh, are to make use of a close by store. But we, um, we do have significant uh, preferences that are in place as well. Now, we could experiment with this model and normalize for preferences and see how that makes a difference. We would probably see a more pronounced gradient um, uh, in terms of, of the weights. We do know that there's, um, uh, over time, there's uh, uh, changes in weight that are reflected in the sizes of the icons here. Now, what does a model like this do for us? Well. If we want to understand the effects of interventions, ladies and gentlemen, we could change the nature of this physical environment. We could add in additional parks. We could add in additional grocery stores in areas bereft of them. And we could see the ripple through effects by running the model on the evolution of weight uh, for the individual. Another thing we could do is we could work within this model in different experiments to change people's preferences. So that, for example, people who are located further from a park or further from a, a grocery store, we work as a targeted population to try to, to, to increase their preferences for healthy food so that they go a further distance. They're willing to go a further distance for that food. Um, we could alternatively, potentially, um, uh, by subsidizing, uh, subsidizing good fruits and vegetables, potentially indirectly change how those preferences are expressed. So a model like this provides a lot of opportunities for, um, uh, for uh, building a top of. Um, we only have time here for one or two additional items. Um, would people like to see uh, one way that we might conduct a targeted intervention? Like an intervention on people who are, who, who are uh, comparatively far from a, a park and comparatively far from a grocery store? Would you like to see that? Okay, so I would like to put in place, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a mechanism for intervention. So to do this, I will stop.